What's up, Buck? I am Doug. You are watching DE in the Garage, and today we are doing part two of the Ultimate Mechanics Workbench. Uh, if you didn't see part one, I recommend you go check that out. It will be somewhere in one of the corners, and it'll be down in the description. We took a big old pile of two by fours, we ripped them, we screwed them, we glued them, uh, we came up with this table, we cut it down to length, and what we now have is a slab of two foot by five foot by three inch uh, laminated two by four butcher's block, tough as nails, built for the apocalypse. Uh, workbench. Today we need to level it because the Hody Po 2x4s that we got were in no way straight. They were all types of wonky and we got all types of ridges. So we're going to take the Porta Cable knuckle eraser over here. We went out and got some 80 grit and I grabbed one 120 though. I will probably do 80 grit on the uh, the 21 by 3 Now the first thing I want to do today is actually pull this ready rod out if I can. Uh, and the reason is it would be a heck of a lot easier to cut these to length if they are not inside the table and it would be a lot easier to sand these sides down. I kind of chowdered up these uh, holes that we so precisely drilled with the um, spade bit when I was tightening it down. Anyway, let's get the uh, bolts off first and see if there's some way we can jimmy jam these rods out. I'm just not certain that's possible with the amount of glue in this region. Now we're gonna take the heaviest thing I have in the shop right now, it's my five pound sledges elsewhere and see if we can't. Oh, that is solid, man. Let's put this down on the end here. I don't think these are gonna come out. Let's get this over the thread so we don't booger that up. No, why does that matter? Well, it probably does. Let's see, one more. Uh, that's not gonna happen. There is no way we're getting this ready rod out. So, plan B, work around it. All right, now I most certainly could have kept beating on this thing like it owed me money, but uh, the fact of the matter is it's not that important, and if I were to break out a chunk of this table or have it delaminate in the middle just because I was being a freaking gorilla on this thing with a BFH, I would have been less than happy. So we're gonna move on to sanding. I've got the uh, port of cable that I inherited from my grandfather. A nice old piece of, I would imagine, U.S. made iron. Yep, product proudly made in the USA. You see that? I know I'm proud of it. I'll be proud to be using a proudly made in the USA port of cable that is likely from sometime in the 70s or 80s. We'll be using some Harbor Freight sanding belts that were not made in the U.S. Now don't laugh, I bought these uh, DeWalt safety goggles for like grinding exhaust under the Jeep, you know, to try to keep my eyesight. Uh, and they work darn good for dust too. So I'll be wearing these and I recognize I look like a nerd. Oh yeah, there it is. I actually did a review of these as one of our very first videos. I would not recommend going and checking out any of our very first videos. They are a little bit rough, but hey, they got us here. Now I had the 36 grit in my hand. It certainly would have made light work of this but I suspect a little bit too light of work. They didn't have 60 grit. So let's see what the 80 does. Let's say you, we're gonna, we're gonna try to ease into her. <laughs> Last thing I wanna do is dig a big old ditch in the middle of this. Alright, after our first two minutes of sanding, a couple things are clear. One, this is going to work. Two, it's going to take a very long time. And three, I probably should track down some 60 grit because the 80 is just not biting quite as much as I'd like. Alright, let's put in a few more minutes see where we're at in a little bit. Ooh, buddy buck, I'll tell you what, it's not too bad. It's pretty mint as long as you squint. This is about a half hour's worth of work here with the 80 grit belt on there. It's actually the next day. I finished up last night, went to do this little walkthrough and the camera was dead. Amateur hour, I tell you what. But uh, I did go out today and get some reinforcements. I'm gonna just quickly just see how a 50 grit belt does. And I decided for the bottom, I'm probably gonna use this 36. Cause the bottom doesn't need to be, this looks like a beautiful butcher's block you put in your kitchen, all right? Uh, the bottom doesn't need to look like that. I just need it level enough to mount my legs to. So I'm gonna see if the 36 will just quickly rip through. It might be too much. I might be digging trenches in my table. We will see, but right now, 
I'm gonna re-suit up. I'm not gonna film too much of the actual sanding that's boring as heck. I will give you a couple pointers. Uh, let me just get suited up, get some dust masks and whatnot on, get this Diablo on the porter cable, and we'll get back to business. If you're doing this and you're not really a woodworker, you're not really sure, the key is to pick a couple of sections and just sort of keep moving. I got dust in my eyes, like I can't even tell you right now, these goggles did nothing. <laughs> oh my God. I turned that machine on, it blasted right through the little vents in the bottom. Amateur hour. All right, holy halibur, Batman. Um, what was I saying? So here's the thing, right? You can't try to do the whole table at once because you're gonna drive yourself crazy and you're not gonna make enough progress and it's gonna be very difficult to track what you're doing. I find it's easiest to take like chunks. I was doing a little over a third uh, at a time and just sort of back and forth in a, in a big circular motion. You can see that's how I ended up with this. The contact area on this um, three by 21 is only, that's yeah, about six inches right there and then it starts bowing up. So you're probably gonna have a little machine like this, maybe you have one a little bit bigger. Um, so you're kind of just taking that six inches and going like this. Make sure you hit the corners. You don't want to end up with ski slopes in the corners. And just nice and slow, man, it just takes time. You're just going to work it down and around. And uh, this is only, I mean, I, I think this is a pretty impressive result considering how bad this looks. And if you remember from the original footage, this one was like almost a quarter inch higher than these two. And then these two were up. So to have them all level like this, I could be done if I wanted to. I'm, anyway, that's what I suggest. Nice little areas, keep working, keep moving around. Don't let this thing sit. If you got one little high spot, don't let it sit because before you know it, you'll have a ridge right there and it'll dig right in. <sighs> Let's see. Who, buddy? You could get yourself into some trouble real quick with that 50. <sighs> that 36 is gonna be terrifying on the back end, but I am gonna show it. Here, I'll bring you guys in so you can see the difference here. I hope you guys can see this. So right here is the 80. It's Pretty nice, it feels nice to the touch, pretty smooth. Right here is completely undone. And then this is the 50. You can see it's really gouging into the wood. If you let that sit in one spot too long, you're gonna have a real serious low spot and you need to bring the whole table down to match it. Here's some of those little cracks I'm noticing. That's a little crack, that's a little crack. So we're gonna get some paint on this tonight. I, I plan to just put like whatever color I have sitting over there in the junk pile, some, some black. I think I have some black Rust-Oleum roll on stuff that it'll be fine it's for the edge of the table all right anyway i'm going to uh i'm going to sign off for a minute in an effort to save the camera battery. There's a mosquito in here it's february what are you doing get out of here buck too many christmas uh in an effort to save the camera battery so that we can actually film the rest of the night all right see you guys in a bit who buddy buck i will tell you what <sighs> That 50 is key. Made some great progress. Let's bring you guys in here so you can see that. This is probably a half hour of work with the 50. I was done up to about here. I re went back and redid some. That's the thing, as you start taking off more, you kind of have to always be working on the whole table there. Anywho, here's what we're gonna do. Probably gonna stop sanding for tonight. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty dusty. Uh, we're gonna stop sanding for tonight. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna see about <clears throat> getting some paint on there. Probably the worst possible conditions. I know you can't see on the camera, but there's just particulates of dust everywhere. But if I put it off any longer, this is gonna just keep on cracking and I'm not okay with that. So let's go find some paint. We'll just apply some, uh, you know what stinks about that though? I was gonna sand all this down. Shucks. Hmm, what should we do? Hmm. <clears throat> all right, you know what? I can't. I'm not going to paint it just to sand it again. We'll just deal with it. If a couple little cracks happen, a couple little cracks happen. It's nothing we can't overcome. All right, friends, I got out the hacksaw and I started to cut and I realized there was no way in heck I felt like doing that six times. So I took the guard off the spinning wheel of death and we're just going to real nice and gentle like try to zip off a bit and then I'll probably plug in, I don't know, maybe I just put a flap disc on this and draw it in there. I don't know, we're gonna find out. Definitely not doing it with a hacksaw. I definitely don't wanna beat up the actual table too much. Let's see how we can do this. Engage sparks everywhere. All right. <clears throat> well, 
they're not sticking out a foot and a half now, but now we've got little razors attached to the side of the table, which I guarantee I'm gonna rip my sweatshirt open on. Problem for later. All right, off camera, we took it down as far as we're gonna go with the 50 grit. Uh, there are only some very small discrepancies, which I can live with. If this was a dining room table, it'd be another story. Um, we're gonna move to the 80 grit. Here's the thing about moving up in grits with sandpaper. Any mistakes that are left are just gonna be exacerbated. So you have to do everything you can with the lowest grit you're gonna use, understanding that there's a little high spot that you're noticing now, it's gonna be even more noticeable later. Uh, before I do go to the 80 though, I'm gonna flip this thing over and we're gonna to try to chew through real quick with that 36 grit, all the bump and stuff. Let's get this table flipped over, see what she looks like. I'll tell you one thing, I had to move it around earlier. This thing has some gravity to it. I tell you what, some real gravity. It's gonna be awesome having a vise on this thing. Be able to wail on all them tie rod ends and everything. So here's what the underside looks like. We got all kinds of type of stalactites and stalagmites and fraggle rocks and whatnot. Um, I think we're gonna put that 36 on and just chew through this. Uh, the 36 is gonna be real aggressive, but this side's not gonna be up. Um, and I really just need it level ish to get the legs mounted. I can't mount the legs like this, so let's put that 36 on. Ow! Just stab myself with a chunk of glue. Amateur hour! Uh, yeah, let's get the 36 on and start chewing through this. Here's a fun fact. I already completed my first project on this bench. The uh, front roller on this thing was a little bit worn out on one side, so the belt wanted to escape. I couldn't adjust it anymore, so I figured I'd flip it around. I had this thing laid out on the bench, took her apart, oiled a few things up. So the bench is officially christened. Already got a little drop of oil on the other side. I was putting some three-in-one on the roller bearings in there. So uh, bench is already christened and she's not even done yet. It's gonna have a long, exciting service life. Yikes, this belt is... I think this belt might have to do some self-clearancing on this back piece back here. It's all right, let's see what happens. Contact! I'm pleasantly surprised. It is very aggressive, but it's not so aggressive that it's not controllable. I think this is gonna go real quick. We're just gonna zip right through it, get her down, and then we can move the frig on from sanding. You should see my garage, man, it's friggin' KO'd. All right, oh, plus the wife hasn't been able to park her car in here since the weekend, so kind of up against the clock on that one, too. Ooh, buddy, I'll tell you what, that 36 made delightfully short work of the bottom of this table. It's uh, far from good, but pretty good from afar, damn near meant to be squint. I wasn't trying to level the whole table because this is the bottom of the table and I just don't care that much. I wanted to make sure the corners, like the first four boards, were pretty level and I wanted to make sure the edge at least looked decent because you are going to see it. Uh, but we are good. We're done with the bottom of the table. If you look at the finish on this, you could just 36 the whole top. It's a workbench. I'm using it to crack those things open and absolutely destroy it with all of those various fluids up there. Uh, this is not uh, going to be a carpenter's table. It's going to stay nice. It's not going to be a showpiece. So I got to tell you what, with the 36 on here, it's like trying to hold on to a raccoon that's been uh, kicked in the ass. <laughs> hold on to his tail. This thing wants to go with the 36. I've seen people race these, kind of like a pine wood derby track. I'll bet you this porter cable would uh, put up. Be quite the competition. Anybody wants to race belt sanders, you hit me up. Squawk box is down below. We'll meet at dawn. Alrighty, Buck. We are done sanding. I don't know why. Because I'm freaking tired of sanding. The garage is KO'd with dust. Probably just going to have to burn this one down and start again. Not even sure it can be saved. The top, we took down to 80. The bottom, we left at 36. Uh, the sides, I hit with the 80. They came out pretty nice. Took away that line from where I had to finish it with the handsaw. We took some 100 grit. We went over all the edges. I didn't really want that chamfered edge like you see on a lot of these wood block tables. I wanted more of a sharp edge. Now, it came time to protect these ends as we discussed, already starting to crack. I have a number of colors uh, of this Rust-Oleum stuff, this protective enamel, it's real good stuff, but only one made sense. Gloss smoke gray. It's an homage to my dad. Anything my father has ever fixed, or really even touched, uh, it tends to get a coat of uh, gray Rust-Oleum primer. Everything. Tools, things. I give him my Jeep lift to borrow. Things come back primered, so it only made sense that in my own shop, with the techniques my dad taught me, we go for the gray. 
was I think it'll look good. A little Battleship Gray on there. Heck yeah. Like them, uh, them Dodge Challengers are coming in Battleship. That's beautiful. Now the key will be to not spill this on the top of this table, which we just put so much time into. Yeah, I don't trust myself. We're gonna do this. I am well aware that this is damn near the worst environment to be painting in. There's dust flying through the air. But uh, you gotta work with the tools you're given. Today we were given a dusty shop, a monkey with a toolbox, and a comically tiny little foam brush. The foam brush may or may not actually work long term. Actually, foam brush may do all right. It's a small area. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this. Then we're gonna move it into its final resting place. Well, no, not final. Now the cart, which I'm gonna use for legs, has to be all cut apart. And initially I thought that was gonna be a real easy task, but it's proving to be a little more difficult. Uh, the welds are a little better than I thought, so we're going to lay it on the cart over there in the corner so the wife can have her garage spot back. Alrighty friends, there it is. I would be lying if I said I didn't dig it. I kind of want to paint the faces as well. Not sure I'm going to do that though. Uh, here's what we are going to do though. We are going to go ahead and call this the end for part two, because I think we have plenty of footage and nobody wants to see a 20 minute video of somebody sanding. I promise uh, we will finish it up in part three. We'll mount it. We'll mount the vise. We'll do some other cool stuff and we'll get it in its place. Thanks for following along. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, by all means, leave us a comment down in the squawk boxes. If you like the video, like the video. That's common sense. Go ahead and sub to the channel. Consider checking us out on t Patreon, Etsy, and Teespring. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm going to let you guys watch me try to wrestle this very gravity-dense table over there.